And I'm thankful to be here this morning. Mark chapter number 2, are you there? Say amen. The Bible says, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, <clears throat> it wasn't the sick of the palsy's faith. But when Jesus saw their faith, you say, if they could only trust Him like I trust Him, then they could see Him like I see Him. Know Him like I know Him. Honey, sometimes all it takes is your faith to believe that God can save them, and God will save them. When Jesus saw their faith, He said in the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there reasoning in their hearts. Why doth the... By the way, let me stop long enough to say this. Most people who are sitting down on God, most people who are inactive, they're not carrying anybody to Jesus. They're not doing anything. They're watching Jesus. Too many people are spectating about what Jesus does. And when you start to spectate about God, you'll start to criticize what everybody else does. They were sitting. Don't sit down on God. Somebody in here this morning needs to get active. Amen? They begin to reason in their hearts. Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether is it easier to say unto the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed walk? Is it easier for me to save him or to heal him? Is it easier for me to fix what's broken on the outside or to fix what's broken on the inside? But see, here's the thing. God is the God of the inside brokenness and the God of the outside brokenness. If God starts fixing the inside God can fix the outside. I came to preach this morning. The Bible said, but they that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he rose up, took up the bed, and went forth before them all in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it on this fashion. <laughs> we never saw it like this before. Jonathan, stand up and pray for us this morning. Take us to God's holy throne of grace and say that he needs to get in this thing desperately. Pray for us. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, God. Thank you for what you've done so far, Lord God. Thank you for speaking to my heart, Lord God. Yeah. situation, but I pray this morning that you touch Brother Brent as he preaches, Lord God. I beg Amen. you, God, to show up in this place, God. I <coughs> pray, God, for the one that's in here, Lord God. Yeah, we need you. That haven't quite got what they need yeah. yet, Lord God. I pray, God, for the one that's broken in two, Lord God, they just don't know what to do. God, I pray. Jesus, God, Jesus, help us. Sick, Lord God, on the inside, Lord, I pray that you touch them. God, I pray that they be able to come to you, Lord God, know that you're here. God, yes. God, to do something special in this place. All is vain, Holy Spirit. If you don't stir. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, God, where nobody else can speak, God, that the Holy Spirit would go. Lord, yes. I pray, God, that you break up the final realm, Lord God. <laughs> the day, yeah. Lord, break it up, God. Break it up, Lord. In a mighty way, Lord God, we need you. 
meet you in a powerful way. God, I pray that we didn't just come to church to morning, this morning, God, just to say that we went to church, God, that we leave knowing that you were here. God, that we leave knowing that you met with us, God, knowing that we met with you, Lord God, knowing that we felt your touch and, and felt your breath and felt your, your, your arms around us, Lord God. I pray, God, for the one in here that doesn't know you're a Savior. I yes, pray, God, touch them. Save them, Lord. God, that you'd save them before it's everlasting too late. God, we need you. God, I pray yeah. for the one that's gone so far away from you, God, that they come back to you. God, that they come through that press, Lord God, and find their way to you, Lord God. We need you. God, I pray you give Brother Britt special lunch from this morning, <coughs> Lord God, that you'd help him. God, to preach you like he ain't never preached you. Lord, yeah. we love you. Thank you and praise you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to preach this morning in the same vein that uh, the preacher preached last night and the night before, and uh, I don't normally like to do that. I don't like to follow the same subjects. I don't like to do what everybody, it's just not, I'm not made up that way. I don't like to repeat what other people have said, and, uh, but I, I know that God told me to preach this this morning. And uh, I knew it days ago, even last night, my wife can vouch for this, on the way to the restaurant, I said, I, I'm not going to be able to preach what I thought God told me to preach tomorrow morning because of what the preacher preached last night. And I said, and she said, why? And I said, because I, I feel like it might be repeating some of the same things that, that he had already said. And she, in all her wisdom and boldness and... and uh, Knowing who I am, she said, well, don't you think that might be God? And I didn't think of it like that before. And uh, she's a whole lot spiritual than I am. So I want to preach in that same vein, and maybe it is God. Chapter 2 of Mark and chapter 3 and chapter 4 all begin the same way. They begin with the same subject. They all start off with Jesus going back to a place He had been before. Chapter 2 says, and again He entered into Capernaum. Chapter 3 said, and again He stood up in the synagogue and preached the word unto them. Chapter 4 said, and again by the seaside He preached unto them. Three times in three chapters, Jesus is going back to a place He had been before. I am thankful in my life when God showed up for the first time. I'm thankful that I'm saved. I'm thankful that when I got saved, it only took one time. I'm glad that I didn't have to keep coming back and God start doing a, a uh, repercussion of what He has already done. I'm, I'm glad that He didn't take out 12 months to, to work on me and get me saved. But the very moment that I bowed my head and asked Jesus into my heart, Jesus came in. Jesus became Lord. Jesus became King. And it was all about Jesus. I'm glad when I got saved the first time, it was all that that took. But there have been many things in my life that I needed God to not do it just one time, but I needed God to do it another time. I'm thankful for God doing the agains in life. Let me put it in your terms. I, I, I read a verse in the Bible where Jesus said, I have come, and if I go, I will come again. I'm thankful that I've got a God who is in the midst ministry of again. If he did it one time before, honey you can rest assured he may do it again. Let me get on your level a little bit deeper. Maybe you've had God pay a bill you couldn't pay and, and you didn't know how he's going to feed your family and you thank God that in the past God came through for you but today you sit here and you need God to pay another bill and you need God to feed your family 
again. And maybe you're sitting in here this morning and maybe there's a sickness in your body and you've had to have treatments and maybe there's things going on around you that you don't understand. But you remember that God touched you back there. But this morning, you can't dwell on back there. You need God to do it again. Maybe there's somebody in here this morning and God showed up in the middle of the night and you were in discouragement and distress. Depression had set in and you didn't know how God was going to touch you. Maybe you've had God walk in to the dark cloud of depression and lift that cloud off of you just to show you that He is still your friend and He is still your God. But you see on the horizon, those storm clouds are a hovering again and you don't know how you're going to make it out of this storm. I'm thankful that it God did it back there God can do it again I want to preach on this morning this subject the ministry of again God keeps coming back I'm thankful that God keeps coming back to a place in my life God keeps all I'm thankful for what He did there. But I need Him to do something here. There's somebody in here this morning, no doubt. God's already told me you was coming. Been praying for you this morning. Been begging God to touch you this morning. I've asked Him to get me out of the way. I've asked Him that if I can't be used to either break me or position me in a place where I didn't get in His way. You walked in here and you need God to do something again. See, we spend too much time thinking about how God moved on us last year. But how much from the commitment you made last year in this very meeting have you spent time with God? And maybe you've become calloused and maybe you can't feel His presence like you used to feel it. And I'm glad it's not about feeling, but I can feel as I go. Amen. And there you see it and you wonder, I don't feel God like I used to feel God. And I don't know if I trust God like I used to trust God. 2014 was one of the worst years of my life preacher and I don't know if I can ever believe in a God like that honey if God came through for them and God came through for that one and God came through before God can come again God can stir that spirit in you again The ministry of again. When God begins the ministry of doing something again. I want you to notice some things. and I believe that every person in here, every young person in here, and every older person in here, I don't know if you just got into the family of God and you don't understand everything about this and you're looking at me like I'm some crack addict that don't even know what he's doing and I'm a little weird to you. It's all right. You're a little weird to me sometimes too. But thank God we can knit our hearts together and you might not have been in this thing longer. Maybe you You've been in it 50 years and and you need God to touch you this morning. I'm thankful I'm preaching about a God who has the ministry of again. Everybody in here this morning, every person in here this morning can benefit from God's ministry of again. You can. You can benefit from it. God can do something in you again. Every person in here And I believe it because of the characteristics. I believe it because of what God does when He does show up again. The first characteristic, let me show you this. Number one, I want you to watch this. When He does show up again, it is unmistakable. His presence is unmistakable. Watch this. The Bible said that Again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. 
It won't take you long to figure out whether God is in a service or not. It does not. You've been in this thing long enough. You know when God's moving and when God's not. You know if God has showed up to a place and God has not. You know when it's become more about a preacher or about a singer or about people than it is about a person. It was noised that he was in the house. I want you to notice this. His reputation. How do we know that God's presence is unmistakable? Brother Shane, how do I know that when God is here, it's unmistakable that God is here? We're getting our agendas in the way and sometimes it's cloudy whether or not it's not about an emotional upstirring. This is one of the quietest services that I've probably been in in a few weeks but it's been one of the most precious because I know He's here. It's not about the emotional upstirring, but it is about His presence is unmistakable. I know He's here. His presence is unmistakable because His reputation always precedes Him. It always precedes Him. It was noise that He was in the house. Notice they wasn't talking about their favorite ball team. Notice everybody wasn't gossiping about the preacher. Notice everybody gathered together in this place, in this setting where Jesus was. They're not talking about what's going on down at the mall or the latest fashion. They wasn't talking about American Idol. They wasn't talking about who's with who in Hollywood and who's sleeping with this one and who's having a baby out of wedlock. Nobody is talking about that. It says it was noise that he was in the house. Do you know how? I know when God shows up because God's people will be a noisome about Him. The talk will be about Him. The worship will be about Him. Everybody will be about Him. His reputation precedes Him. Not only that, but His, watch this, I like this, His representation, His representation proves Him. It was noise that he was in the house. And watch this verse. I like this part. It said, and straightway many were gathered together. Now you can get a crowd together, but that don't mean anything good is going to come out of it. I hear preachers preach all the time. There's churches we go into and they're drying up and they're dying and this one's leaving and that one's going over here and and all kinds of division in this church and and this one's mad at this one and and I watch these ministries as they dry up and they're dying. Do you know why ministries dry up and die? Because they cut off the source of why they were growing in the first place. It's said that many were gathered together. We use this verse, well, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I'll be in the midst. Honey, I know it says where two or three are gathered, I'll be in the midst. But if God's in the midst, it won't stay two or three long. I promise you, because God's people will gather together around God's presence. Many were gathered together. Why? Because his representation proves that he's in the house. I look around this morning. I see somebody like Brother Shane sitting on the front row. I think about old Tiny over here. I remember sitting over there in front of that house and you telling me your testimony about how God came and saved you. The reason you're in church this morning is you're not wanting to gossip about everybody. You didn't get up early this morning to get over here and talk about somebody else. The reason you got up this morning is because God has proven it time and time and time again that sure He is. Many were gathered together 
In that many were people whose eyes were healed. In that many that was gathered together were people whose legs had been lame and they got up and walked. Why? Because the representation of the people that are in here this morning prove that God is who He said. God can take a drunk. You was a drunk. You was a drug addict. You were in here and you didn't know why God wanted you. But here you are sitting clothed and in your right mind. It's got nothing to do with who you are. It's got everything to do with God has proven He is who He said He was. When God shows up, it's unmistakable because of the representation. It's unmistakable because His ritual promotes Him. Watch this. His reputation precedes Him. His representation proves Him. But his ritualization promotes him. I like this part. It said, and he preached the word unto them. He, I know that don't bless, bless you because you've read it too much. But every time Jesus showed up somewhere, he preached the word unto them. He preached the word unto them. The word of God was preached unto them. He preached himself. Because in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. But the best thing about it was, the Word was God. You say, I don't know how to get close to Him. I don't know how I'm going to draw. I used to be close, but I don't know how I'm going to get back there. A good place to start. He's got a road map for you. The Word. Every time Jesus gathered together, He preached the Word unto them. Because His Word was powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And today, the Word of God is going in the hearts of people. It may be here. It may be over there. There's meetings going on all across the country. And somebody's going to stand up and do the same thing Jesus did when He stood up in the midst of them. He preached the Word. Faith. Your faith is low. Your faith has gone down. Your faith has hit rock bottom. You don't know how you're going to get faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It's unmistakable when God shows up because His Word will be preached. We was in a, in a meeting. And this man, I was in, I think it was St. Matthew, South Carolina. Little bitty church. This girl had been begging her daddy to come to church. Very wealthy, well-to-do guy. He didn't have anything to do with religion and, and everything. He tied to one of the Methodist churches, one of the bigger churches in south of Columbia. But he never did. He, he had religion, but he didn't have a relationship. That's the difference. Why is everybody talking about Jesus? Why is everybody religious? Because their religion is everywhere. Relationship is not. And she's sitting there begging him, Daddy, please come to this meeting. Daddy, please come to this meeting. Please come to this meeting. He came and he got saved in that meeting. She sent me a message on Facebook not long ago. She said, I was so elated that I saw him walk an aisle and get saved. She said, it just mesmerized me that he was even in church. She said, but preacher... That's not what blew my mind. She says it was the man he was after that trip to the altar. She said, I got a brand new daddy. She said, he was speaking things I had never heard him speak before. And the relationship between my mama and him was different. How do you know when God shows up? You can watch people who's been in His presence. Listen, preacher said it the other night. If you go back to doing the same thing you've been doing, you haven't been in His presence. Can I tell you something? It's not that He wasn't here. It's that you didn't get from Him what you needed while He was here. You can be in the presence of God. There was thousands that came to the presence of God. There was thousands, multitudes gathered around. 
But you don't hear stories about multitudes. You hear stories about a blind man, a lame man, a dead man, a woman with an issue of blood. Why does God, hallelujah, why does God put their story and not those other people? Because they were different when they left His presence. If you leave the same way you came this morning, you got in His presence, but His presence didn't get in you. It was noise. He was in the house. Many were gathered together and He preached the Word. Watch this. The ministry of again. Not only is His presence unmistakable, but watch this. His power is unrestrictable. His presence is unmistaken, but His power is unrestricted. Watch this. I like this part. And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they had come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. They came, but they couldn't get to Jesus because of the press. Can I tell you something? There's somebody... Standing in your way of getting to God. If you haven't received revival this week, it's not God's fault. If you haven't received revival, it's not the preacher's fault. If you haven't received revival, it's not the pastor's fault. It's not the choir's fault. we got to stop depending on everybody else to be our religion for us. If you don't have revival, God's been here. God is here. I feel Him. He's stirring in me. But watch this. The Bible said when they got to where Jesus was, where His presence was, they couldn't get to Him because of the press. There were people standing in your way. Some people, a boyfriend will stand in your way of getting to God. Do you know how you know? Can I just be real with y'all? Can I be real, lay it out real simple? Do you know how, that person you're trying to date, do you know how you can tell whether or not that's God's will for you? Get them in the presence of God. Yes, sir. And watch how they act. Amen. If they're not drawn to the presence of God, if they don't feel comfortable in the presence of God, if they say, I'm saved, but I don't worship like you do, and I don't do it like they do, and I, I'm just not one of these uh, fanatical kind of Christians, then honey, he ain't playing on the same team that you're playing on. If they feel uncomfortable in the presence of God, it's because there's a different presence in them, and that means you need to get out of their presence. There are people that will stand in your way. And I'm talking to young people because this is a youth meeting. But there's some other people here. There's some experienced and seasoned people here. And there are people that will stand in your way at your job place. There are people in your family that will stand in your way of seeing God. There's people all around you that will guard you and keep you from seeing God. But do you know who the worst person is that keeps me from God? Me. There are people that will keep you from God. And the worst person that I deal with every day is me. I keep me from God. Watch this. It didn't stop them. I'll say that again. I didn't get enough amens. I'll buy a few to, to, to this morning if I have to. I know it's a morning meeting, but amen works as good in the morning as it does at night. Amen. Hallelujah does too, amen. amen. It did not stop them from getting to Jesus. Can I ask you a question? What is stopping you from getting to God? There is nothing that will stop Him from getting to you. Yeah. But there are things that will stop you from getting to Him. What is that? This is what I like about them guys. It said that they uncovered the roof. That don't mean nothing to y'all, but if we're sitting in this building and there's some people that, that need God 
and they can't get in here and all of a sudden you start seeing those rafters start shaking a little bit and you, you hear a little hammering going on up there and all of a sudden those boards begin to pop off and sunlight begins to break through. People are going to watch. It's going to stir your heart when you see people trying to get to where Jesus is. What they did was they uncovered some things. There are some things you're going to have to uncover in your life. Quit hiding behind your leaves, Adam. Get out from among them. I wonder how Adam long, how long Adam thought them leaves would cover him. Because the very leaves he was hiding behind was going to die and dry up and fall off and would reveal what he is. It's time you got out and uncover what you really are and admit it to God and say, I got to have you. There's something that needs to be uncovered. I'm a porn addict. I'm an alcoholic. I've got problems with talking about people. I've got things around me that I need to uncover. You've got to remove the dirt from around the roots for God to heal you. They uncovered the roof. And I like this. It said, when they had broken it up. That stuff that wouldn't come up after uncovering it, they just busted it up. There's some things that need to be broken up this way. You said it in your prayer. Break up that fallow ground. There's some hardness in this meeting. There's some young people that you've been in it so long that you're callous to it. Those same songs don't do what they used to. That Word don't help you like it used to. That does not mean that the Word is not powerful. It means that your heart is calloused over and it's hard and it's time to break up some stuff. You've got some relationships with people that need to be broken up. You've got some relationships with this world that need to be broken up. Somebody needs to go on their Facebook today and say, I know we've spent a lot of time together, but I'm going to have to take some time away from you. I'm going to have to break up with you until I get my priorities in order. Somebody's going to have to turn on your radio and say that station and that that singer, uh, I'm just going to have to break up with you for a little while. and We're not going to be able to hang out like we used to hang out. See, you've been keeping me from getting to God and I've got to have Him. I can't live like this any longer. Some things have got to be broken up. Break it up. Because His power is unrestrictable. When they had broken up that, they lowered him down. And Jesus looked at him and said, Thy sins be forgiven you. I don't even know if God wants to cleanse me. I don't even know if God wants to talk to me. I don't even know if God wants me. When you start breaking up some stuff, you won't even have to come up with it, conjure up a prayer. That man didn't say a word about sins. I said that man didn't even say a word about his sins. But immediately Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. Wouldn't it be good if you took that trip that you've taken so many times to the altar this morning and start breaking up some stuff and start releasing some stuff and start letting go of some stuff and then hear Jesus say, you had not even asked me yet, but I couldn't wait to tell you, your sins are forgiven. Because His power is unrestrictable. The devil can't keep the power of God off of you. There's nothing the devil can do. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in this world. The only person that can keep you from the power of God is you. My time is waning. Let me me move on. But I'm having a good time this morning. Let me give you these, just in case you like right now and outlines. Let me give you this. I was going to preach this, didn't get to. His power is unrestricted no matter how crowded it is. Said they could not come nigh unto him for the press. No matter how criticized he is. Who can forgive sins? And I like this no matter how critical you are. The sick of the palsy born of folk couldn't even get to God himself. God's power. 
is unrestrictable. You say, I don't even know if I can get to Him. Honey, honey, you listen? He can get to you. No matter how critical your condition is. My wife lost her mama. You said that last night, I think in the foyer, and she overheard you about losing your mama. Her mama was diagnosed with cancer. And 18 days later, gone. Four days before our wedding, gone. I've watched my wife in a critical condition. But I watched God do on her what a husband can't do. Can I tell you something? I know you probably don't like being made an example and an illustration. Can I tell you something? You didn't go through this valley just for God to forget about you. And you didn't go through this valley for God not only to feed you and to water your dry ground, but God's going to water somebody else out of your life. Your testimony helped my family this morning. No matter how critical your condition is, God's power is unrestrictable. He can get to where you are. But do you want to get to where He is? I'm done. Watch this. The ministry of again happens when His performance is unmatched. His performance is unmatched. I like this. Jesus' performance is unmatched because of what He takes away. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Nobody can do for me what Jesus does for me and the best thing Jesus does for me is take some things out of me. Because of what He takes away. But not only that, for what He gives back. Go thy way into thine house. Amen, preacher. Not only what he takes away, but what he gives back. I'm going to let that marinate a little while. What he gives back. Go thy way. That boy had never been able to go anywhere unless somebody took him. But God said, go your way. Go your way. Don't go their way. They don't, you don't need them no more. Go your way into your house. What do you think his house thought when he come walking in? Somebody got back a brother that they hadn't had a relationship with. I don't know if he was married, but if he was, somebody got back a husband that she had never been able to relate with and have conversation with and enjoy companionship with. Nope. If they had children. Whoever was in that house, let's just go ahead and say this. They got back somebody that they had never had before. You know what makes him so unmatched in what he does and in his performance? Is what he can give back to this church just out of your life. It changes everything. Not only what he takes away and what he gives back, but watch this. I'll give it to you and I'm done. What he leaves behind. The multitude, in the next few verses, it said the multitude resorted unto Him. Jesus left the house, went away His journey, was going to a place where nobody else was, and guess what? The multitude followed Him. Yes, sir. Right. If Jesus ever touches your life, it won't take you long to start following He puts a burning desire in you. I like what the multitude said. It said, we've never 
saw it on this fashion. In, in our world today, we have what we call trend setters. We got trend setters. Trend setters. Somebody come up here and play on piano. I'm done. Trend setters are people in the music industry. When they go to the awards bank, they just had the, the what do they just have? Grammys, I think it was. The Grammys is a bunch of people that can't sing, singing on stage after you bought a CD that was so doctored up and there is no comparison to how bad they really are and how they doctored up those voices. It's awful. Those people can't sing worth a lick. That's better singing in church choirs across this country than any of that stuff on those stages. But do you know what they do? They have a red carpet show before those, those awards banquets. And, and they have an announcer who always describes what those people are wearing. They're basically wearing an outfit that nobody has ever seen before. And you know what happens? Kids like you see that, and because they're wearing it, you go out and try to imitate it. You go out and you try to find it. You want to be like they are because if they're wearing it, nobody's ever wore it before, but if they're wearing it, you want to be a part of that. You want to be a follower of the trendset. I wonder how many young people would look at God and say, I've never saw it on this, not the fashion of the world, but on the fashion of God. And you'll say, if He's doing it, I'm going to do that. Amen. Yes, sir. If, if, if that's what He's wearing, I, I want to wear that. How many Christians would decide that you want to live on a plane where we've never saw it on this fashion before. How many of you want to go to church? I'm asking you point blank. This is not a rhetorical question. I want you to answer me. How many of you want to go to church like you've never seen it before? How many of you want to see revival that nobody has seen before? How many of you young people, you want to live in a plane and on a level that nobody's ever lived before? How many of you want to go to church and you want to leave and say, we ain't never seen anything like that before? How many of you would decide that instead of following the trends of the world, you'll follow and you'll be a trend setter for God? God's cause. How many of young ladies will look at little girls coming up behind you and say, I can't wear that because they'll want to wear that. I can't listen to that because they'll want to listen to that. I can't act like that because they'll want to act like that. And God has made me a trend center. Come on after me. I'm following Jesus. It's all right. How many people would get up from your pew and decide that this morning I want to see it like I've never seen it before. How many of you want to see it on a different fashion? The ministry of again. God will do in you what He's never done with anyone else. Come on. As the pastor, I want to thank you for viewing our video today. However, if God's dealt with your heart, we do not want to end this video without giving you a chance to be able to accept Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. If you're there today and God's actually dealing with your heart, I want to remind you what the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means every single one of us has had problems, issues, sin, failures, faults in our past. But the great thing is this, is that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming through the Father but by me. There is a way to be able to have hope, to have eternal security within the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to know that you're saved by the grace of God. Now the great thing about the Bible is it tells us about the love of God. He says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's amazing to a lot of people and they can quote it. But the beauty of it is this, is the very next verse tells us the purpose of Christ. Because the Bible says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through Him might be saved. That means that God sent His Son to die for those of us who are sinners so that we can have fellowship with God Himself. Now, if you're there today and God's willing to deal with your heart, 
I want to ask you this question. Do you really believe that God's been dealing with you about salvation? If that's the case today, then I want to tell you what you need to do is repent of your sins. You need to die to yourself. Admit that you're lost and you're on your way to hell. And then look at what the Bible tells us, that He tells us that we can be saved through Christ. Who do you call on? There's only one. As the Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Christ and Christ alone. So I tell you today, would you trust in Christ? I want to ask you, would you, would you trust in Him as a personal Savior? You say, Brother Jason, I don't really know if I can do that. Well, let me tell you, the Bible also tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It don't matter who you are, where you come from, God sent His Son to die for everyone. If you've made this decision today to be able to trust in Christ, to be able to die to yourself, to, to be able to start living for Christ and accept Him as a personal Savior after repenting, would you do us a favor and be able to contact us at 336-788-0551 and let us know about this decision that you made so we can start praying for you. Thank you so much.